In the United States, you're legally able to vote for presidential and vice presidential candidates when you reach the age of 18. Around that same time, you might also be considering different colleges for your post high school life. Well, have you ever looked into the Electoral College? You won't be getting any brochures from them, and you can't go on a campus visit. The Electoral College is a group of electors, appointed by each state, who formally elect the President and Vice President of the United States. While members of the Electoral College are chosen to represent their respective states, there isn't really a college. In fact, they never actually meet as a group. Instead, at the appointed time, they head to their state capitals to formally cast their votes for President and Vice President. Wait, wait, wait. You thought I said that you could vote for the president and vice president. What's all this about these electoral people? Let me explain. When citizens of the United States cast their votes for president and vice president, we're participating in what's known as a popular vote. It's just like American Idol. We each cast a ballot for whichever candidates we want to support. So, out of all the votes in the U.S., if candidate A received more than candidate B, candidate A would win the election. If that were the case, we would have a direct election process. Instead, the president and vice president are formally elected by members of the Electoral College. The popular vote still affects the results of the election, just not directly, which is why we call the U.S. election process an indirect election. But like I said, the popular vote still affects the election. The results of the popular vote determine how the members of the Electoral College cast their votes. In 48 states and Washington, D.C., the candidates that win the popular vote receive all of that state's electoral votes. Oh yeah, every state has multiple electoral votes, and the number can vary between states. The total number of electoral votes that each state receives is equal to that state's total voting membership in both houses of Congress. D.C. gets as many votes as it would if it were a state, but no more than the least populous state. Anyway, Maine and Nebraska don't use the winner-takes-all method. Instead, each congressional district selects its own candidate and that candidate receives electoral votes equal to that district's number of seats in Congress. So, the president and vice president are formally decided by the members of the Electoral College. That means it's possible for a candidate to win the popular vote, but lose the electoral vote. And it's even possible for electors to vote for a candidate that their state or district didn't vote for. It doesn't happen often, but it's still possible. So, those are the basics of the Electoral College. What do you think? Sound like a good system? Have any suggestions for improving it? How about questions? Leave them in the comments below. Thanks for watching.